Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. It would be great if we could find one chair position and one operator's position from which we could visualize all four quadrants of the patient's mouth and yet maintain good posture and good visibility for the operator. But we can't. The best we can do is look for the best position on each quadrant, or for each quadrant. I'd like to show you that with the, without a patient in place so that you can see the chair more easily. The first quadrant we'll look at is for the lower right quadrant. The chair is as low to the floor as it will go, the tilt is about one half. In other words, the foot rest is about parallel to the floor. The back of the chair is back to about the 45 degree mark with the horizontal. This is the basic position for the lower right quadrant. The lower left quadrant, the chair is in almost identical position except that the back is dropped to about a plus 25 mark. About there. <clears throat> you may find it necessary to raise the chair slightly. And when we have a patient in position, I'll show you the relationship between the patient and the operator. Now for the maxillary quadrant, the chair will be raised sufficiently high so that the operator can get his knees in behind the back. And the back is dropped to about the plus 10 degree mark. We would prefer that you do not use the horizontal or minus 10 degree mark, as this is going to lower the patient's head below the feet level and increase blood pressure to the head. Most patients object to this after a period of time and would much prefer the slightly raised position of the back at about the plus 10 or plus 15 degrees. I think at this time we'll bring in a patient to show you the relationships between operator and patient. When the patient has been seated, we can put the patient in position to do operative for the lower right quadrant mandibular right quadrant. So again, we'll go back to the one-half tilt and the back down to about 45 degrees. The chair is already low to the ground. Now the patient is in position. You'll note that the head is in line with the body. Do not put the head back with the headrest. This will make it more difficult to see down into the lower right quadrant. Now for the operator's position. The operator in this position will have his feet relatively close together. The thighs will be at about 105 degrees to 110 degrees to the floor. Slightly raised, the hips over the knees. This gives a little added height to the operator and enables him to seed down better into the lower right quadrant. The back should be relatively straight. He will look down with his neck and eyes. Don't look over or bend over with the back. Stand up straight. Look down with your head and use the eyes. Now to get into the correct position, <clears throat> the operator will come in at about the 7 o'clock position. Get the knees together and behind the chair. And from here, you should have a good view onto the lower right quadrant. You will note that the elbows should drop down beside the operator. Hands and elbows are at about the same height. Now, you can open and we'll have a look into the lower right quadrant. This is the view you should have into the lower right quadrant. The patient should turn your head 
toward the operator so that you can see more easily into this quadrant. Note the position of the operator. My back is firmly against the backrest for support. And the back is straight. Now in this position, this is excellent, of course, for all operating in the lower right quadrant. Also, you can use this position to set castings, to try in and set castings in the mandibular arches. The advantage, of course, is uh, in not having the patient too far back and having a loose casting uh, escape into the pharynx. Also, you may use, use this position for slicing if you're using a lightning disc and doing any disking. The, this position will serve very well for mandibular right quadrants, quadrant, and maxillary right quadrant. Although you will have to raise the chair in order to see well. For the maxillary right quadrant. Both right quadrants may be done in this fashion. Maxillary and mandibular. For the left quadrants, you will need to lower the chair and get the chair more in position for the mandibular left quadrants. Of course, you will need to provide adequate protection to the tongue with Svetopter and possibly an additional mirror. Besides those items, uh, this, this position of the patient and operator are excellent for the lower anteriors. Direct work can be done with direct vision and with the use of the mirror, a good access and visibility is apparent. Now to the mandibular left quadrant. The chair is nearly in that position now. We will lower the back to about plus 25 degrees. The tilt is still at horizontal. The footrest is horizontal to the floor. And we're ready to assume this position for operating in the lower left arch. The chair should be raised slightly so that the operator can assume his position at about the 11 o'clock position behind the patient. The knees will have to be separated in order to get them behind the back of the chair. Visibility should be excellent onto the lower left quadrant. This is what you should see in the lower left quadrant. As you move further back to the posterior, it will be necessary to, for the operator to move his chair operating stool further around to about the 9 o'clock position. Now if we continue in the maxillary arch, the back, the seat will be dropped to about plus 10 degrees. And the chair must be raised so that the operator can have his knees under the back. You'll notice that I have lowered the operator's stool so that the thighs are more parallel to the floor. Now the operator moves in at the 11 or 12 o'clock position and we're ready to look at the maxillary arch. In the maxillary arch, in this position, you'll be using the mirror almost constantly. Some direct vision is possible, but for the main, the mirror will be mandatory. Now with an assistant, the use of the mirror is relatively easy because the assistant will be washing and drying the mirror constantly. When you're operating alone, it is more of a problem. Uh, you will have to 
stop and rinse your mirror quite often. You should reduce the volume of water in your high-speed handpiece and perhaps use a surface tension reducing agent on the mirror to help maintain a film of water on the mirror. But taking those precautions, most of your work will be done relatively easy with the use of the mirror in the maxillary arch. Now, one other thing that we should talk about, and that is in giving anesthesia, you will be able to do most infiltrations and blocks using the position indicated for that particular quadrant. As you can see, in the maxillary arch, it will be relatively simple to give infiltrations open again in this position in the maxillary arch. The lower right quadrant is a different problem and should be treated more carefully. The chair should be in position for the lower right. And you will see what I mean if you uh, <clears throat> if you will give uh, giving anesthesia in the lower right quadrant can be done with the patient in this position quite nicely. A problem may develop giving the anesthesia for mandibular arch if the patient is in the wrong position. If she has her head too high, you can see that it's very difficult to come down. You don't have visibility into that quadrant. It's awkward. Also, if the patient is too tall and you have your hands and elbows high, and you're trying to come down in this angle, it's nearly impossible to gain adequate anesthesia. The solution is to have the patient and yourself in correct posture and correct chair position. If this is not possible, it's always possible for the operator to stand and give the anesthesia from a standing position. In summary, you can see that there are a variety of chair positions and operator positions that are necessary to gain good visibility onto all quadrants. The object is to maintain good visibility and have good access into all quadrants. If possible, it is very desirable to have a good operator comfort and patient comfort, but this is secondary in nature. Therefore, we would like to see all our students try to maintain better posture in the clinic and position their patients properly. Thank you. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.